What's up, everyone? Welcome to This Day in Philly Sports History for February 7th, 2023. We are officially Super Bowl week. It was good to see the media sessions yesterday. We'll get more into that in a minute. But quick Flyers update. Lost 2-1 to one last night to the Islanders. They are officially in NHL purgatory. They're not going to be able to probably slip down now into one of those top draft picks. They're not going to be good enough to make the playoffs. The team basically came out and uh, Tortorella, the coach, came out and had that letter. Basically, it was I I would imagine that the, the team signed off on it. Basically said, we're not where we want to be yet, blah, 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 blah. Ultimately saying, don't expect us to make the playoffs. We are improving with our young guys and things like this, but we're not where we want to be. So they are officially in purgatory. Uh, there is some some promise with some of the young players. Hopefully they can get out of some of the bad contracts they have. But I don't know. Maybe they can go on a 20-game losing streak and get back into the, the draft pick conversation. But here we are. All right. So, again, with the Super Bowl, finally with the media day, it was actually interesting to see. And since it is Tuesday, we do our motivational sort of just – couple minutes here. One thing I saw from a lot of the guys that played in Super Bowl 52, and I heard Lane Johnson say it, I heard Fletcher Cox say it, I'm sure like Kelsey and other guys like that said it, were was just about staying in the moment. And now that they're, they they know what to expect, they're able to soak it all in and really kind of enjoy it and, and be, for lack of a better way to put it, be in the moment. And it's something that, honestly, I was going to do as sort of the, the theme for this week anyway. It's something that I, I've been trying to work on, and especially with the kids. And there's been a couple times where whether it's like looking at the moon and just trying to find the green comet that, that's been flying around, um, playing a, a hand or two of Uno. And it, it's taking a pause and just soaking in the moment and, and just being present where you are. And I think... For the Eagles this week, I think that's going to be huge. Obviously, the Chiefs have the same mentality because they've been there too. But I think for the Eagles, and they have a good mix of guys that have been there and haven't been in key positions, I think that's going to, like Elaine Johnson, Kelsey, Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham, just saying, you know what, we're soaking it all in. We've been here. Here's what to expect. Just relax. I think we're going to see, probably from both teams, a, a game that... You're not going to have the nerves uh, that you might have. Obviously, there's going to be some nerves because it's Super Bowl. But I I think everybody's going to be present in the moment. And if you take anything away from today and throughout your week, just stay in the moment. And and don't be so focused on what you have to do. Uh, Again, I'm guilty of this all the time where I'm like, oh, I got to do the research for the podcast or I have to do this. And I'm missing this. And like this past week, I've taken a couple times where I'm like, you know what? Let me put this on hold. Do it after the kids go to bed. And we played Uno, which I'm the Uno king. But that's a story for another day. Um, But as you go through your week, especially this week with the Super Bowl, I feel like in Super Bowl 39, I had no idea what to expect. And it just was chaotic. I was in a chaotic point in my life at that point as well. Super Bowl 52, I was nervous and and didn't really get to enjoy it. Now that we've won one, I feel like I'm obviously I'm amped up. I'm ready to go. But I'm soaking it in. It was the first time I've ever actually watched a lot of the media sessions last night. And it was actually pretty interesting, pretty cool to see the guys sort of uh, let their guards down and everything. So just as you go through your week, stay in the moment. Enjoy this because you never know when it's going to come back again and just live your life that way because each moment is precious. So if you take anything away from this week, just stay in the moment and enjoy and be present for what's going on in your lives. Now, the other big story for the Super Bowl is, and it ties right in with a lot of things we're doing here, is this is the first time that two black quarterbacks are ever starting on both sides of the Super Bowl. And to me, that's a very historic thing because I still grew up in a time where you didn't see many black quarterbacks, and when you did, they uh, the stereotypes were they're they're athletic, um, they're not smart enough, and a lot of times, even like in high schools and colleges, like quarterbacks that were black were kind of shifted into like a running back or wide receiver position, like a skilled position where they didn't have to use their quote-unquote brains. And 
it to me it's it's we've come a long way and like I said when I started watching um, football there was not a ton of black starting quarterbacks I know uh, there was a couple backups floating around here or there but obviously we had Randall in Philly and Doug Williams was the first one to win start and win the Super Bowl for the uh, Washington team back in uh, I think it was eighty seven I think that was that Super Bowl but. It made me kind of think back, and one of our for our Philly Sports Black History Spotlight today is just the history of the Eagles and black quarterbacks because I feel as though they've had a, a a large number of black quarterbacks over the years and a large number of successful black quarterbacks. And I mean, you go back, you had Randall, Rodney Pete, uh, McNabb, Mike Vick, and now Jalen Hurts. I mean, and they even brought some guys in that have started over the years that maybe didn't have the success with, uh, like, a Vince Young. Uh, Don McPherson was uh, a backup there for a couple years for Randall. Um, But it just goes to show that even all of those guys all had that athletic knock. Um, Like, Randall, he was the ultimate weapon, and he just was unleashed. Donovan... uh, went through a part in his career where Rush Limbaugh was uh, making racial comments about him. And you saw at one point in his career, there was a more of a hesitance for him to run sometimes because yeah, he was, uh, he was able to do it, but he wanted, always wanted to prove that he was a pocket passer. Um, obviously with Mike Vick, I mean, he was just a phenomenal, like he had, he, I, he, his arm, I feel was stronger than Randall's and he had a good arm, but I mean, he was, he was able to do the best of both worlds and now we see it with Jalen. Oh, he's a system quarterback. He's this. And it's an unfair stereotype, an unfair label uh, that hopefully I, I, I want to see a guy like Jalen Hurts just do it because he's got the mindset. And I feel like he just goes about – he is laser-focused too. If you saw his um, conference yesterday, he's just laser-focused and like he's just a good dude and he's going to do whatever it takes to win. And I think a lot of the, the new generation of black quarterbacks are like, fuck it. That's fine. We can run. We can pass. We're going to do it all. And I, I, I think we've, we've come a long way. I still think we have a long way to go in this. But the fact that there are two black quarterbacks starting in the Super Bowl, for somebody like me who started watching football in the, like the, the late 80s, this is a huge, huge deal that 25, 35, 40 years ago, you might not have ever thought you would see. So Kudos to both Jalen and Mahomes for just doing the right thing and, and just going out there and, and being who they are. Um, and I also want to say I'm proud to be an Eagles fan and an organization that that not only isn't afraid. Uh, Jeffrey Lurie took a big chance on Mike Vick, and we'll get I have a couple things on him coming up. But a, an organization that embraces the the idea that anybody can play quarterback. If you're good, you're good. So. Proud of that. So shout out to to Jalen, uh, Donovan, Randall, Rodney Pete, Mike Vick, um, all of them. And uh, let's go, Birds. Let's win the Super Bowl. But let's get to this day in Philly sports history. We're going to go back to 2015 and kind of going uh, off the beaten path somewhat. But Herb McGee won his 1,000th game as a head coach. He coached, for those of you who don't know, at – Philadelphia Textile, which became Philly University, which became and is now Jefferson University. He was known as the shot doctor because of the way he was able to teach people to shoot. Um, at one point, I don't know if he actually did, but he was rumored to be working with Ben Simmons. Um, obviously, I don't know what happened. Even the shot doctor couldn't fix Ben Simmons, but that's a different story. He is a basketball Hall of Famer, uh, won 1,114 games in his career, coached 54 years there in East Falls, uh, five-time uh, conference champion. I think they're like the Central Atlantic Collegiate Conference. They're Division II. Uh, he won the uh, the tournament in 1970, the Division II t- championship. Uh, made the tournament 30 of his 54 years. Only had three losing seasons in 54 seasons there on Henry Ave. Um, he's a Pennsylvania Hall of Famer, Philly Hall of Famer. He actually played at Textile too. So he was just a, a fixture of that university. And I'm kind of kicking myself now. I, I lived in that area for almost 20 years and I never went up to see him play a game or see a game at Textile, Philly U, or Jefferson. I, I was there for all three names. But. 
Uh, on this day, back in 2015, Herb McGee won his 1,000th game as a head coach. Coincident or not coincidentally, but uh, right before, like maybe a month before that, uh, Coach K actually won his thousandth game. So in all divisions, Coach K has the most wins. Herb McGee is number two. Uh, he coached until uh, just this past season, the 21-22 season. So shout out to Herb McGee on his 1,000th win um, on this day back in 2015. It's Super Bowl week, thank goodness. Again, shout out to the Eagles organization as well as Randall, Rodney, Donovan, Mike Vick, and Jalen Hurts for, for breaking through the stereotypes of the black quarterback and, and showing it doesn't matter what color your skin is, how well what you do or how your style of play is. If you're good and you're a good leader, you're going to be good. So shout out to that. We'll have more on the Super Bowl tomorrow. Go have yourselves a Tuesday. And until next time, I'll see you when I see you.